Hey guys, Direwolf20 here, and welcome to episode 6 of the server Let's Play. You can see we started filling in some lights in this giant room we made, and we actually decided that I probably made this room a little bit too big. Uh, if you were paying attention in the last video, you know, I started with the flatificator, just trying to flatten out the landscape, and then I just immediately switched over to building mode and decided, you know what, I made this room way too big for just a teleportation hub. So that's why I uh, put this little sign up here. This is going to be the actual teleportation hub, and we'll probably have teleport chambers lining the walls. I doubt we'll need much more than we have room for in here. Um, and then this main area out here will probably be some kind of, um, you know, welcome area or something like that. There'll probably be a couple things to get people started um, when they join the server. Maybe some, uh, you know, newbie items, something like that. And uh, that might be a cool thing to do. So we might wind up sectioning off this room a little bit more, but maybe not. Who knows? So why don't I get started building the first teleportation chamber? I'll be back. So the first thing I want to do is build my uh, solar panels. These are going to charge um, pretty much every... Um, every uh, teleportation chamber that we have. So I'm going to build the one by my house first, and uh, to do that I'm going to build 32 solar panels. So to build 32 solar panels, I need a good amount of iron. More than I actually have here. Well, close, actually. I sat down one day and did the math on how much iron and whatnot I need, and it turns out I'll show you guys exactly what I need in a moment here. For 32 solar panels, I'm gathering the materials. So I need two and a half stacks of iron, half a stack of refined iron, one, two stacks of tin, four stacks of cobblestone, one stack of redstone, one and a half stacks of cabling, which I obviously need more of. Let me go get some more rubber. Okay, so there we go, copper cabling. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything here? No, I think that's good. So I do need to macerate my coal, because it needs to be coal dust. And it's a pretty quick and easy build. Thirty-two furnaces become thirty-two iron furnaces. We're gonna need thirty-two batteries. Put our iron furnaces with our refined iron and batteries gives us a generator. Because batteries only stack in stacks of sixteen, so we got our battery our generators there. And then we pick up our coal dust. Much better. And then we take our coal dust, our glass, our generator, and our cables, and we get a stack of solar panels. 32 of them. See how quick and easy that was? So once again, just in case you weren't paying attention, you need four stacks of cobblestone, two and a half stacks of iron, two stacks of tin, one stack of redstone, one and a half stacks of cable, one half of a stack of refined iron, and one and a half stacks each of coal dust and glass. So that'll get you your 32 solar panels nice and quick and easy. So that'll be uh, the foundation. I'm just going to stick this in this temporary storage area here, because I do need to build um, where I'm going to actually put some stuff. Um, why don't I go see what my uh, quarry has dug up for me, because I'm running a little bit low. That should be good. Alright guys, you've all seen me build an MFSU plenty of times, so if you want you can just skip this part, but I'm just building one, um, just so you can see. I grabbed some materials here, um, made myself a bunch of extra stuff. Excellent. And I'm going to need about a dozen, uh, well, actually even more. Let's see, I hope I have enough cabling here. I might even need to go get more rubber. Goodness. Yep, 
Yeah, that should be good. Actually, need one more of those. So I do need an advanced one of these guys. Wow, just barely enough cabling. Time to go farm some more rubber, huh? Alright, got myself an MFE, got myself one of these guys. So let's split this here. And anybody who checks out teleporters will realize that any significant distance of traveling, you definitely need an MFSU to store the energy in. So that's why I'm going to have to go down this route and use all these diamonds and all these other materials to make uh, our MFSU. Awesome. So I've got the materials to make my little solar farm. I've got the MFSU to start storing the energy in. Why don't we get outside and build that? And I'm also going to need to build a room. And I started to get the materials for building that room at some point, but I'm just going to bring this stuff along with me and kind of clean up my inventory. I'll be back shortly, guys. Okay guys, uh, before I do step outside and build something, I do want to real quick build the teleporter that I'm going to be using. So I built myself a frequency transmitter, another one of those advanced machines, some cabling in the background here, and uh, a diamond. Hooray, teleporter! Alright guys, I'm just in here flipping my frequency to 6 because I want to run another builder. I want to flatten out an area outside my house here. You can see I've got this crazy amount of area here that I need to kind of clean up just a little bit. Um, I already laid down the flatter guy and uh, set up where I'm going to run the flattening area at. And this should work out pretty well, and I'm going to run it up to about here. You can see the corner of my line there. And I think that's going to work out well. So why don't I plug in some of this thing here some glass, and then I want it to be dirt that flattens with. Oh, stupid me. I grabbed a, the wrong piping. Hang on a sec. There we go. Frequency 6. Everything's going. Let's turn it on and see how it goes. True! And it should fill up this whole area rather nicely with all that dirt that I want. I'm feeling like this will be a pretty good area. And it should be right about here where it washes up to. I mean, that's just something cool. You gotta love watching that. It smooths out the land, clears out anything that doesn't belong. I mean, that's just awesome. And it'll even knock all this stuff up off too. Like it'll go all the way up to the top of the, of the world, pretty much, as far as I know. So it should clear up this whole mountain. It'll just kind of carve it up rather nicely. So why don't I let that run and I'll be back in a few minutes to show you uh, the craziness that comes uh, about because of it. And there we go. All cleaned up. How pretty is that? A little bit of lag, um, just on my end, because I just carved up this massive mountain. But that is pretty cool. I'm going to go dump all this dirt into my recyclers. Alright, let me go clean up this dirt and stuff, and I'll be back. Alright guys, so I got this nice little area mapped out as you can see here. Um, let me actually clear up this uh, tape thing. There we go, much better. And I think I want to build... I'm trying to decide like how I want my design to work, but I basically want to have like a little, you know, area here that'll be my teleport area. So let's see how some basalt looks. see my IC machines tripping along rather nicely out there. I do like this marble brick stuff. That's kind of neat looking. Not too shabby. Maybe I want to do like an alternating pattern of marble and basalt. I don't know. Could be 
cool. You guys who've watched my videos probably realize that Direwolf is not the best when it comes to doing some like pretty design or something that looks like, you know, really nice or whatever. Um, he's kind of not artistic in any way. I think I actually want to extend this one more block over. Maybe one more block less. Yeah, I have no artistic skills whatsoever. Um, I really don't. I have some pretty good functional skills, I guess. I'm good at making things that work nicely, but in terms of things that look nice, not so much. There we go. clear this wall out. Alright, let me finish building. I'm just going to be building this house along these lines. I'm not sure if I want to go with this whole um, you know, brick thing, marble brick, so if I want to go some more basalt, I don't know, I'll figure it out and I'll be back. Ooh, look at this. I just made the floor pattern look kind of like that, and I think that looks really neat. That's pretty cool. Alright, let's take a look at our little teleportation up here. I'm going to definitely put, like, a little step up here or something. I might want to make this outside border here be the... Yeah, maybe I want to do this. kinda so it looks all uniform like and I'll clean that up in a bit and I'm gonna want to have like a little step up here do I have any smooth stone on me? No, I'll come back and clean that up later so I'll step in here and this will be our teleportation chamber and I'm probably gonna want the teleporter to be like right here-ish I'm thinking I don't know if I want it directly against the wall so I'm thinking this might be the good spot to put the MFSU and the teleporter. Okay guys, so what I'm doing now is I'm running this uh, tin cable and I'm going to wind up running it down through the wall here. Uh, I don't want it to be seen at all, of course, so I'm running it through the wall. And I'm going to run it down to my MFSU, which will be sitting here. And that's going to face up, and then the teleporter pad will be right on top of it. So that should be pretty cool. And then I'm going to have to do some uh, cool stuff with uh, Red Power to get it to look nice. But I think we'll be in business shortly here. And I'm just doing my standard solar flower design that you've all seen before. You see, I usually use uh, copper cables, but I'm trying out the tin cables this time just because I want to see how well they work out. Um, I'm sure they'll do pretty well. But I just want to, you know, make sure that I get the power flow that I'm expecting I'll get. But I'm pretty sure the tin will work. Um, I know a lot of the other guys on the server use their tin cables for solar panels, so I guess it works. We'll find out. So this is uh, the 32 solar design that I've, you know, obviously done a few times. If you look at my solar power um, video tutorial, you'll see this design is pretty much identical to what I've done in the past. And let's get out those solar panels now. And just kind of do it like this. Nice and easy design that I've done a dozen times. Perfect. And then for the top layer, we just lay it like so. And this is kind of the perfect design because you get 32 energy units per tick, which is exactly as much as the bat box can um, output. So your bat box kind of is uh, stable in terms of inputs and outputs. And you can see it's flowing rather well. And now we're going to go ahead and place down our MFSU, which I'm just going to put right there. Oh, definitely uh, 
pulling more juice than I... I didn't think it could handle that much juice, but I'll have to figure out how that works. Oh, you know what? Maybe I don't want the bat box there. That might be part of it. Yeah. Yeah, so what happens is the, um, the, the tin cables here are just fine for using within the solar flower. And if I didn't have this bat box here kind of being the centerpiece of it all, then um, I could probably run a tin cable down and straight down to the MFSU. But for now, I'm just going to go with the old uh, reliable uh, fiber optic cable. So let me go make some of those real fast, and I'll be back. Figured now is as good a time as any to show you guys this while I'm making these. Um, if you upgrade to Industrial Craft version 1.23, you'll see that you only get four glass fiber cables when you do the design now. But if you get the uh, red power mod and you get some silver ingots, you get six. So definitely recommend uh, saving your diamonds, especially if you're not playing with equivalent exchange. Diamonds are uh, not easy to come by, as you probably are aware. So I'm probably going to need even more than that, but this will be alright for now. Yeah, definitely need probably at least another six or so. So I'll finish this up briefly. And ta-da! MFSU is filling up at what I hope is a rate of 32 energy units per tick. Looking good. And we'll know that this is accurate once this bat box drains. We'll know that the uh, energy flow is good. But since the bat box isn't draining, we can tell that we're getting an input of 32. So 32 going in and 32 going out at the same time means there's no change in the amount of energy being uh, produced there. And if I were to just, you know, maybe knock off this guy, we should suddenly notice that we're slowly losing energy. And putting him back will show us that we are once again perfectly even. So that's the nice thing about the 32 solar flower, is you get a perfect amount matching the bat box output. So I'm going to go ahead and place down that marble that was here. And my teleport pad is going to sit right here on top. But I'm not going to place them yet. Uh, I want to do a couple more things before I do that. So I'll be back. Okay guys, the next thing I want to build for you here is a saw. This is from the Red Power mod, and I believe I can do it like this. Maybe not. Let's try with these gems. No, also not working. Weird. There we go. I need two iron in the middle. That's what it is. And then we get a handsaw. I made it with ruby, but you can kind of do it with whatever you want. Uh, you can use any of your red power gems. You can use emeralds or sapphires. Um, but we got this handsaw here, and that's for carving up um, thinner slices of blocks. So what kind of different blocks can we make? Actually, we can make a whole lot of cool things. Um, like, a ton of stuff going on. But uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and figure out exactly what I want to do. I want just like a cover here. I'm thinking if I just take like a marble brick and a ruby handsaw. No, maybe it doesn't work with marble. How about with the basalt? No. Oh, there we go. Hang on. Okay, that's cool. Down to panels and then covers. Let's get a couple covers going on here, and I'll do the same with the basalt. Yeah, there's all kinds of different things you can do with uh, red power. Let's lower this stuff a little bit for you guys. So that's like a thicker panel. That's like a thinner panel, so that's pretty cool. And you can use this to cover up your redstone wiring. So what I want to do here is place down my teleporter, like so. Perfect. And then I want to run a redstone wire. Like this. So that my button to activate the teleporter is probably like right here. Yeah, that's what I want. 
So I want like this guy here. And then the button can go like here. See how that works? And hopefully that'll all come together. Now if I lay down like that, see how nice that looks? You can't even tell that it's a covering from a distance. You can't tell at all, actually. It looks perfect. So we've just effectively hidden our redstone wiring. And now when I step on this telepad and push the button, it'll activate the telepad. However, there's one minor issue. I don't have anywhere for it to go yet. So I need to build another teleporter and uh, pretty much hook it up back at the uh, main central hub that I was talking about. So I want to get ready to do that. Okay guys, so I'm back in that little teleportation hub that I was talking about earlier, and I placed down what I'm hoping will be the first of the teleportation pads. I'm feeling like this is a pretty good layout, but I don't know. I might want to map it out differently. I did build myself a teleporter, and I just need to place it down and then use my frequency transmitter to connect them. But Let's see if I can't find a better way to build this, because I'm not mm, totally loving how this looks. So guys, I'm crafting some red lumar, which is a red power 2 item. You can see it's redstone, glowstone, and uh, a color, a dye here. You know, I could easily do yellow or green, but I'm going with red, because I think that looks pretty cool. Um, and then what I'm going to build next is something like this. That works. A couple of red lamps. Because I want to have a little bit of a red light above my teleport pad. So there we go. Just put a redstone torch and some cabling here. And we're good to go. Okay, so here's what I've built so far. Just like this little teleportation chamber thing here. I'm going to wind up sticking this button on the wall. I'm not going to wire it just yet, but that's basically going to run down to my teleporter to teleport me back. I haven't built an MFSU to sit on the bottom here, but I at least want to hook up a um, two-way or one-way teleport to get from my base back to the main central area here. So I'm going to lay this guy down, and I'm going to grab my frequency transmitter here, right-click on this dude, and teleport home. And I definitely want to use, uh, you know, some back and forth here just because. Uh, frequencies on teleporters is a little bit funny sometimes. Alright, teleportation link established. So now, excellent. When I hit the button, it works. Cool. Let's give it a shot, shall we? Push the button, boom, and I'm back here. How cool is that? And theoretically, I'll be able to push this button to get back, but of course there's no uh, power feeding this teleporter yet. Alright guys, well I'm back at my base now, and I just noticed my quarry had finished, uh, so I went and picked it up from where it was in the past. It was just hanging out. And if you remember, I had some item teleport pipes just kind of sitting around my quarry, trying to keep the quarry up and running and, uh, you know, loading the chunks around that. Well, Zeldo, go ahead, awesome man Zelda that he is, gave us a block that will specifically load chunks. It's a simple recipe for iron ingots, gives us a chunk loading block. So... And I just make a few more of these. And this really does the same thing that the item teleport pipes do in terms of loading chunks for us. Man, that chest is getting full, isn't it? Yeah, just a bit. So anyway, this guy is going to keep chunks loaded. I don't even give myself an extra one more, just for the heck of it. And go ahead and throw my iron back in my chest. So let's go out. He also made another change, um, which is also awesome. If I hit F9 out here now, um, we can see that there's these little red blocks inside of uh, the loaded chunk areas. The reason for that is that um, sometimes just, you know, based on how the outline worked out, um, there might be an outline along, around a chunk that is not necessarily in the loaded chunk list. So let's see if I have any here. Now these are all loaded. But you could imagine that, like, maybe if that chunk was loaded there, and that one was loaded there. The one I'm in now might not be, but it would be surrounded by blue lines, and it just might be a little bit hard to read. So putting the red lines in the middle there made it definitely easier to read what's up. Cool. So those were a couple of the changes that uh, 
Zelda went ahead and added to the mod. Uh, I believe they're up for public yet, but I don't know if he's modified his forum post, but who knows, by the time you see this, he might have gone ahead and updated it. He did give me permission to feature it in this video, so I'm featuring it. So I already laid down uh, one or two of these guys. Let's see. I'm just kind of making it about the same size that it was before. Because this size seems to be working out well for me. And why don't I just go out and this distance here. Why not? Alright, that's why not. <laughs> Let's load this guy up here. Make sure we're at the same height level that we were at for, uh... Yeah, I think I'm at Y70. Let's run over here. 69. So one more lower. Yeah, you can definitely see now what's up. And this poor sheep, I gave him all kinds of trouble. Why don't I put him out of his misery? Sorry, buddy. So we'll activate our quarry. As usual, right click. That's where our quarry's gonna mine. Awesome. Oh wait, there's oil here. Mmm, I probably don't want to disturb this. So why don't I cancel that and maybe put my quarry somewhere else? Okay, so I just mapped out a new area here. You can see uh, my beacons, and if I right-click, that looks pretty good. A decent-sized quarry. Even have a little bit of water in the middle, which will definitely help because it'll make sure there's water at the bottom of the quarry. And that way, when it gets down to the lava level, it'll kind of, um, you know, turn it all into obsidian for me. So, let's put down our quarry here. As you've seen me do probably a dozen times by now. Of course, I want to go pick up all my landmarks. Sure, they're cheap to make, but no sense being wasteful. Especially with a quantum suit. And we can pump the items that I pull in out the side here over frequency 1, remember. That leads to the input of my, uh, my sorting system. And then we want power coming in over frequency 5. Um, I don't think you need to put pipes between here. I'm sure you could just connect directly to this, but I always like to put one just so I can see the power flowing through and everything. And receiving is true. So let's go activate this guy. What do you say? Alright. Just gonna pop onto my home. I believe I turned off my combustion engines while this was going. Actually, before I do that, I want to place my chunk loader blocks. So let's see what we've got at the moment. If I F9 this guy, you can see that this quarry is not properly loaded. Uh, so I'm going to need to load a bit more of this area. So why don't I put a chunk loader block here. And then if I F9 and F9 again. Okay. Okay guys, just a little playing around, but I got it going. So you can see now that all the chunks in my quarry are loaded. Um, so all inside the blue lines, as long as they have that red square in the middle, <clears throat> they are loaded. And that's perfect. Because now I'm going to activate my quarry by going home. Heading in here and turning on my switch. And let's head back to see how that worked. It's starting to get dark out, but hopefully we'll have enough light to see. Yeah, it looks like the quarry is building nicely. It's going to clear out the land immediately. Kind of like a flattener does. But it kind of clears the land out in preparation for the quarry, of course. And uh, then it's going to start for me. So I think this is a good place to wrap up the Let's Play. Um, I think uh, time to call it a night for me, particularly. Yeah, we look good. So... Corey's going to run in a few minutes here. I'm going to wrap up this Let's Play. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it. And uh, definitely look for Zelda's latest addition to his pipes there. And uh, it's a good time. He also added a... Um, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm pretty sure he added something like a, uh, a redstone pipe for liquids. So you can detect when liquids are coming through a redstone pipe. I haven't tried it yet, but he did mention that he added something like that, which is really cool. So... Uh, Yep, definitely check that out, and I'll catch y'all later. Take it easy.